All right, good evening and welcome traders. It is September 7th, 2023, Thursday. Here's the evening account wrap up and market review. We're going to be quick on the market review uh, today. Uh, we'll get through some of the things we did in the account today. Put out a bunch of videos. You'll see some of those today. Uh, I recommend that you check those out. One, especially on how to manage your portfolio a bit and remove underperforming assets. Uh, so I did a little bit of a cleaning today. I removed some underperforming assets, a couple winners, a couple losers, just because there was some low theta being generated by them. I've held on to them for almost uh, two months in some, some of those. And to me, it's just not worth keeping all that buying power tied up in the account. So check out that video. You'll see it here on underperforming assets and cleaning that up and removing them. Uh, to improve your overall portfolio. So I managed to really upgrade my theta. I reduced my buying power. Uh, I increased theta and I decreased my delta, which was all perfect with just a couple quick moves. It cost me a couple hundred bucks, uh, but we'll get that back uh, pretty quickly uh, within, uh, within hopefully 30 days. We'll make all of that back and then some. Uh, anyway, uh, we had also had a good day with some zero DTE, but let's jump into the markets before we get there and let's take a look at what happened in the market today. So markets were down a fraction today, 0.31%. If we take a look at SPY here, if we look at the daily chart on SPY, it uh, bounced off the 50 uh, EMA in here. It couldn't quite get back to uh, its... Um, 21 EMA, but opened down. So it gapped down on the day, uh, ran up a tad, ran down a tad, and then uh, finished up. So gapped down decently, hit the 50 EMA, and then finished the day just off of its highs of the day. So a nice little bounce on the session. Still weak MACD and RSI on the daily heading lower. Still looks like a real potential uh, head and shoulders pattern forming here. You've got the uh, uh, the left shoulder uh, over here. Uh, you've got the head uh, up in the top here. And then you've got the right shoulder that we're forming right now. Um, whoops, we'll get back out of that. And also you've got a neckline down here, which is a previous pivot level. Uh, you can see it a little bit better on the weekly chart here. Weekly, still negative. Our, uh, MACD and RSI both dropping. Uh, so right now, kind of in a no man's land, a very likely head and shoulders popping. If that's the case, we could definitely head down into the low 400s uh, on SPY. But we'll see what happens uh, here. Uh, productive day, but down overall uh, on the session. If we look at the queues, very similar pattern forming here. A lot of lines on uh, here. You still very much have this head and shoulders looking pattern. Uh, here it is below this previous uh, support slash resistance flip level. So now the neckline that we have down here is going to be the next thing in play on the queues. We'll see what happens. Uh, MACD and RSI dropping on the daily, and MACD and RSI dropping on the weekly chart here. PSR bearish mode uh, on the weeklies, and today we kicked off a PSR bearish reversal signal here on the daily. So nothing super positive uh, here. Any bounce from here would be kind of skeptical in my opinion, but you know we'll take it as state of traders. If we're not heading straight down and we're not heading straight up, life is usually pretty good uh, for us. So take a quick look at IWM uh, as well on the weekly and the daily. You had also uh, this kind of head and shoulders looking for, man, everything looks this way. Uh, and the on the right-hand shoulder here, uh, you can see we triggered a PSR bearish signal today, also on IWM. Below is 50 and 21 EMA with 21 crossing below the 50. So some definitely some bearish outlook to it. On the weekly, again, MACD dropping, RSI dropping, same as the daily. Uh, maybe we'll head back down in here, but we are sitting right in the middle of this trading range. And uh, perfect for strangles. We've got a strangle. We've had on for nine days. It's up 13% uh, in nine days. So can't really complain too much about where we are uh, on IWM. It's doing exactly what we were hoping it would do. Uh, VIX on the day dropped a bit. 
uh, even though there's a down day today, it felt a little bullish uh, out there. So VIX triggered a PSR buy signal today, even though it closed lower on the session by just a fraction at 1440. The U.S. dollar, another up day uh, here. So I feel like a broken record. We just go up, 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 up. Uh, so even though these are red candles, they're still up days uh, every single day uh, now for essentially, what, uh, five straight sessions of up and seven straight green candle weeks on the U.S. dollar. So U.S. dollar, rip-roaring strong, strong uh, MACD and RSI on the weekly, strong MACD and RSI on the daily. Looks great. And then uh, TLT halted its little slide here uh, today, even after a gap down a couple days ago. It's just meandering in this area. MACD, RSI, not looking too great uh, here. But we are getting into and clo I'm oversold on the weeklies. Uh, and MACD is starting to try to reverse. So might be an area again to get long. I just haven't had any desire to want to get long in here uh, because there's just no reason uh, to do it with other trades. Uh, you know, if you're thinking this thing's going to double in a year, that's possible. Uh, but I'm in no hurry to get into a trade that doubles in a year. Uh, not that it's a bad trade, uh, but just not my thing quite yet. I want to see this downtrend uh, that we've been establishing here. I want to see this break and I want to see a little bit of a better base, not just this V bottom uh, and pop back up. So we tried to do that, didn't make it. So now it's just settling sideways. Now it's getting some of that sideways action that we really want to see uh, for it to base out. Uh, all right, uh, 6A Aussie dollar uh, down slightly on the day. British pound down slightly on the day. Uh, Canadian uh, dollar down slightly on the day. And then uh, if we look at uh, the euro down quite a bit on the day, this is probably the weakest of the bunch uh, in here. Oil took a little bit of a break today, dropping down, which is great for our strangles. Uh, as you can see, the MACD and RSI both starting to tip over on the daily chart and getting uh, into this oversold territory, not only on the daily, but almost here on the weekly. So, may, you know, I, I think we're due for a little bit of a break on oil. Maybe we're going to get a pullback to this $83 range before we make any additional moves. I just think it's a good range to be in on oil. And then gold today as well, a little bit of an update, nothing major, but RSI and MACD on the daily don't look great. And on the weekly, they are starting to form a little bit more of a better base. So just some sideways action, perfect for our strangles. We had a great day on gold strangles today. Uh, I am looking to put a trade on on lean hogs tomorrow. Uh, we cleaned off some room to be able to put this on. I like where it's sitting square in the middle of its Bollinger Bands, uh, just below the 21 on the weekly here. And then over here on the daily, uh, it's got a little bit of an upward momentum. So, uh, so it's got some bullish looking tendencies, but it's still in an overall downtrend. I think it's a good pop up position to be in to put on a strangle before the Bollinger Bands get too tight uh, on it. So I think this is a good spot as bands are starting to tighten up, uh, a good place to put a strangle on. Uh, sectors on the day, uh, biggest down sector, technology uh, was down, gap down pretty solid, finished higher than its gap down, but still not looking great here on the weekly. It's getting that head and shoulders look to it as well. Popped down to this uptrend line, bounced off of it. Uh, so we'll see where tech goes, but big cap tech is really struggling here. Uh, MACD RSI rolling over. XLY had an up day today. So your Tesla and your Amazon. Uh, we're up, and XLC down fractionally, your Google and your Meta. Uh, energy, pretty much unchanged on the day, down fractionally. XLF, your financials, pretty much unchanged on the day, down fractionally. Um, XLP, XLV, XLU, all up a bit. Now, XLU, utilities, had a really good day today. Uh, so a good pop on the utilities side, 1.31. That was our best performing sector on the day. Worst performing sector was tech, 
and also biotech, both not having good days today. That being said, when we take a look at some of the stocks, uh, we talked about uh, the uh, Amazon and Teslas uh, today. So Amazon up one, almost 0.8, almost 2% on the day. So big candle uh, update on Amazon, solid day on Amazon. And then Tesla, which also makes up that other part of XLY, was pretty much unchanged, but gapped down and finished near its highs of the day. So it almost felt like an up day on Tesla, even though we had gapped down uh, to begin the day. So overall, uh, decent. And then we talked about Apple and Microsoft, which are driving the XLK. Uh, XLK getting hit pretty good today. And Apple, a big chunk of it. Now, Apple did finish off of its lows of the day. But as you can see here on the daily chart, a pretty significant gap down here. So now we've got a gap to fill. I don't know that we really filled this gap up here. And now we've got another gap here that at some point we may need to fill. Uh, but you got MACD and RSI dropping on both the weekly and the dailies. Now, what looks good? Google, I think still think looks good. The only thing is the price action looks pretty good uh, here. Just stair-stepping higher, coming back, previous resistance slash support flip area it bounced off of that it has not come close to its 21 ema uh for a while uh but came down closer and bounced uh today still in a bullish pisar uh range here well above its 50 which is a you know which is stacked nicely above the 200 we're ways away it's just that macd looking like we're losing some momentum here uh we'll keep an eye on google but i really like what i'm seeing uh, out of google and then uh, if we look at Bitcoin today, uh, Bitcoin had an update. I really like the way Bitcoin is setting up here. Uh, I'm not a huge crypto guy, but I really do like what I'm seeing. We are in a, a descending triangle here. Uh, we'll extend these supports out on Bitcoin. But I do like what I'm seeing. I think you're establishing a bit of a, a base in here on it. MACD has reversed higher. So momentum is starting to come back into this stock on the positive side. So it stopped its downtrend, has reversed its the velocity of the downtrend, uh, and is now looking to move higher. Uh, and RSI coming off of oversold levels starting to move higher. So I really like the way Bitcoin is moving. And I posted... Uh, on Twitter and a few other places today that I really liked coin early this morning and it delivered during the day today coin up almost 5% on the day. So if you got into it on my uh, tweet and on some of my posts on coin, uh, it was a good day to, uh, to get into coin. I think with Bitcoin starting to strengthen, uh, you've got coin uh, that's going to benefit well. Even though we got a piece of our bearish signal today, we did break back above the 50 and 21 EMAs, MACD, uh, histogram moving positive, RSI moving higher, and also the RSI on the weekly has been moving higher for the last couple weeks, and we broke this downtrend that we've been in. So lots of good things uh, to look at on coin here, and uh, you'll notice that the 618 level off of this big run is exactly where we hit and bounced off of. In fact, we've hit it roughly three times. I like the fact that we hit the 618 and we maybe move higher. Uh, I think Bitcoin and coin have good upside uh, to go. All right, let's take a look at the portfolio today and lots of stuff going on here, but here's what we here's what we ended up with. Uh, 387 for Delta, so our Delta dropped uh, but was perfectly in line under the 0.2%. That's our that's our goal. So 0.13% on Delta, perfect. We love it there. Uh, and then Theta uh, moved a bit lower today, but uh, only because we took a couple of trades off and we weren't able to get all of our trades back on because uh, Lean Hogs has closed at 1:30. We won't they won't reopen the livestock futures market till the morning. We'll be into a strangle on. Uh, on the uh, HEs as well tomorrow. So we'll be looking for that uh, tomorrow and uh, take a quick look where it is right now. Uh, it ended the day up just slightly, but yeah, lean hogs will open in the morning. We will be putting a strangle on that as we talked about in the charts, but our theta 0.28, so we maintain theta despite taking 
six trades off the board and only putting one on, we actually maintained theta. And we had a decent day uh, up day. So we put some net lick back in. Uh, we're up nicely in after hours as well. So uh, we're actually up uh, 298.9. Uh, so we're up decently in after hours. BP usage dropped because we took off some of those underperforming trades that were taking up BP, but not giving us theta. So we cleaned up some BP. We freed up some room to move and uh, our theta hasn't budged. And we put a new strangle on tomorrow. Our theta should increase some more. BP dropped down to 68%. Again, remember that uh, almost 20% of that is in BIL, uh, the uh, treasury ETF. So we're really sitting around 40, 48% uh, on uh, BPU, so perfectly right around our 50. Uh, we did take uh, $559 off today, and let's go through all of those trades that made that up. Uh, so we're down a fraction uh, for the week uh, and the month here because of today, but uh, it's early and we got some big trades that are going to be coming off soon. So the... Uh, the monthly realized we'll be heading up. So here's what we did. We had a bunch of stuff happen uh, today. So look at all these trades. We've only been uh, two days uh, of trading wise, uh, opening and closing into the month. But today, a lot of trades come off. So let's take a look at what we did uh, today. First uh, trade um, that we that we uh, had expire on us is one of our hedges. So we had a spec hedge. We put these 14 DTE hedges on every single week. And uh, we had that expire today. It's all good. We know it's a cost of doing business. So that's one of our expenses that I don't mind having. We're insuring our portfolio against a pretty significant 10 to 15% drop. Should something like that happen? Um, and then uh, we had a bunch of winners we took off. So the first two winners, uh, were zero DTE trades. Uh, so we picked in up about 320 bucks worth of zero DTE. Again, keeping it small, just making some little money to offset some hedges and some other things that we do. We put the call spread on early because futures were down. And I was thinking that Apple and Tesla and Microsoft weren't going to rebound significantly enough to put us positive on the day. And we never did go positive on the session. So we sold the 4470 level uh we never uh you know got close to that 4451s where we closed however we did we took it off at a roughly a 50 percent winner 44 percent winner and then when we hit the lows and we had reversals on our macd our squeeze our rsi and our stochastic momentum as soon as that triggered we put on a put spread we were able to take that off in less than a half an hour for a full 50 percent winner so we actually got both the call and put side done today and then we closed a bunch of underperforming trades. Uh, so four of these, or all five of these, were leaps that we had on. Uh, not abandoning the leap strategy. However, uh, we've been in these trades for quite a while. So you can see that these range from 38 to 52 days in length. Only two of them were winners, 15 bucks, 14 bucks, no big deal. I took those off. One, a $36 loser, and then Apple and Enphase, both a little bit larger losers, but you can stay in those trades. I'm just not going to do it because it's not generating the theta uh, per buying power usage. So when I took all of these off, we freed up somewhere in the neighborhood of $15,000 in buying power, of which we used almost 6,000 of that to put an ES strangle back on. Total theta that was being generated by these was about three per trade. So we we took off about 15, 16 uh, plus theta, but by putting that strangle on, we picked 45 uh, back up on our theta. So we were able to take off some of our uh, theta here on underperforming assets, and we put a new higher performing asset. Again, if you're running this like a business, if your business has underperforming people and underperforming assets, you can't get attached to them. You just got to fire them. You just got to get rid of underperforming assets and replace it with newer assets that can potentially give you better production from what you have. And I just felt that being in these trades for nearly two months without them moving much at all or doing anything, uh, it was just sitting there using buying power and was never gonna give me 
the bump in theta that I really want or need right now with the low volatility in the market. So we took these off. We replaced one of them with an ES strangle today, and we'll get a, a lean hog strangle on tomorrow. And uh, we'll be back up and running with more theta, lower buying power. Uh, and it'll also give us a little bit more delta neutral trades with these strangles versus these long leaps. So it's going to also reduce or did reduce um, our delta, as we explained earlier today. Uh, so our deltas uh, dropped nicely from 419 to 387. All right. There's our recap for the day. Overall, a great day on the net lick side. Took a little bit of a realized loss to clean up some underperforming assets, put some new stuff back on. Love the portfolio, the way it's configured now. I'm right inside the delta that I want to be. My theta is close to where I want it to be. My buying power is absolutely perfectly where I want it to be. Uh, so can't uh, can't go too wrong right now uh, with where we are. We're happy. Uh, and uh, we'll watch and see what the market does uh, for us tomorrow. All right. You guys have a great evening. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.